大家好，我是潘培培博士，欢迎您搁一卖收看《Adjusting Your Heart》。滚大拜哥是广告人际关系，叫精神健康，所以请恁底下 subscribe。咱今仔日的题目是：五家族怎样应对 ALS？ 其实，在两年前，我将温顺哥兄弟的见证，在阮的患着慢性病的 video 搬出来。所以今仔日，咱咧爱知影讲，伊到底怎啊落啊？了伊个太太艾莲娜，交两个大汉个囝儿，每间交买个怎啊应付呢？我是伫希连东地矿地里面个展美会，看到一个影片，阮会将迄个伊个脸揢咧下骹，恁则有法通家己去看。每间个见证实在真正感动人。所以呢，一几年以前叫我上教会，我就问伊，我会做点恁其他的 video 搬出来，伊就讲会做。我是爱特别多谢 Elmer Felici Fabella， 因为是伊创这个 video。Someone once asked me if I have ever gotten angry with God. After all that my family has been through, why should we still believe in God, let alone worship Him? It was 2018 when my dad came home one day, complaining he had trouble chewing and pronouncing certain words. When my dad consulted with several doctors, none of them could determine the cause, but the disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, was mentioned as a possibility. I was a third-year college student at the time, getting my Bachelor of Science degree in physical therapy, so I knew what ALS was. It's a progressive neuromuscular disease with no cure. It affects nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord, causing loss of muscle control. It paralyzes a person little by little. My initial thought was, no, it can't be ALS. My dad started getting depressed. He avoided people and wanted to be left alone. It was difficult seeing him that way. When my dad turned 50. My mom surprised him with a birthday party. One of his dear friends was there, and he invited my dad to join their small group in Makati Gospel Church. We attended one Sunday, and eventually, he became a part of the church family. It was so timely how God reached out to us and brought us closer to Him, just when we needed Him the most. My dad grew deeper in his love for the Lord. His small group tremendously helped him as his support system. 2019 came, and my parents flew to America to consult with more doctors. And finally, they were given a diagnosis. It was ALS. My mom called me up right away. When I heard the news, I started to cry. I didn't question God's sovereignty. I dared not. My heart only asked, "Why my dad? Why him?" My dad cried in the plane on their way home to Manila. It wasn't because he was mad at God. It wasn't because he was afraid of dying. It was because he realized that his time with us was running out, and the thought of leaving his wife and his children behind broke his heart. The following year, his condition drastically declined. He could still drive during the first few weeks of January 2020, but before the month ended, he no longer could. Soon, he couldn't even lift a metal spoon. I was supposed to graduate and start working that year. But when the pandemic happened, everything was delayed. At home, my dad got more and more frustrated as he was losing his ability to function independently. He could no longer eat or bathe by himself. He felt defeated at times, but not once did he get angry with God. Since I was the physical therapist in the family, I became my dad's caregiver. I fed my dad and assisted him even in the middle of the night. I was honestly tired. There was a point when I felt I was more of a caregiver than a daughter. I had mixed emotions about it at first, but I realized it was a blessing. The pandemic allowed me to stay home and give back to my dad by taking care of him. I saw that the timing again was no accident. When December of 2020 came, my dad's health took a turn for the worse. He struggled to breathe and swallow. He needed to be hospitalized. The surgeons inserted a peg feeding tube to his stomach. They placed a breathing tube through his neck and trachea, connecting this to a mechanical ventilator to help his lungs breathe. We were all scared for him, 
Many people were praying for us. An elder from our church went to the hospital to visit, but before he could say anything encouraging to my dad, my dad started writing this with his toes. He wrote three letters, T, Y, G, and they stand for Thank You God. My dad could no longer speak, but his heart cried out in worship. His perspective through it all remains the same. God is the Lord of his life, and he trusts him completely. He came home in January of 2021, and we were finally able to find nurses to help care for his needs. I'm now even closer with my dad. I go to his room daily and tell him about how my day went. He responds by using his toes to write words. We watch movies together as a family. He also continues to attend his small group online. And even if he can't speak during Bible study sessions or prayer night, his presence alone makes a huge difference. Their group also started inviting other people with disabilities and they were all blessed with my dad's presence. My dad may be physically weak, but one thing that has become stronger is his prayer life. Whenever he hears of someone who is sick, he would ask me to tell them that he is praying for them. He even asks me to give him other people's prayer requests so he can intercede on their behalf. People might ask how I could still believe in God after all this, but the reality is God has been so real to us these past few years that we just cannot deny His existence. He has revealed His faithfulness to us, especially during this season of our dad's life. From the moment he was diagnosed to when he was hospitalized, and until this very day, God has not stopped watching over our family. He sends people to help us physically, emotionally, financially, and spiritually. When neither my mom nor I could find time to cook, surprisingly, someone would just send us food. When we couldn't buy anything for ourselves because we had to prioritize our expenses, someone would just happen to gift us with exactly what we wanted. If we didn't believe in God before, surely we believe in Him now. Truly, God has never left our side. Our situation right now may not be how I imagined life to be. All girls dream of having their dads walk them down the aisle one day. But I believe God is sovereign. Right here, right now, this is where we really see God at work in my dad's life, in our lives, and in the lives of those whom my dad continues to touch. There's a song that I love to sing. The title is Waymaker, and the lyrics say, God, you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. God has proven to be all these to us and more. We have learned to fully trust in God, and this means believing in His goodness even when healing doesn't come. My only prayer is that He won't go in pain, and when His time comes, He will go peacefully. My name is Megan Go. The future is uncertain for us, and with ALS, we know that it will only get harder. We still get scared from time to time, but we know our God is in control. This is my dad now. He is bedridden, breathing with the help of a ventilator, and he can no longer speak. But if he could just utter a few words, I know what he would say. Without a doubt, he would say, Thank you God, thank you God. I will live by my dad's example and surrender completely to the Lord, trusting that He loves me and my family. May God have His way in our lives. Go Mang Kong, Nen Uwa Nang Chin Chung, Winston Hia, Sui Lian, Ye Cheng Hong Ya Kang Ko, Iwa Nang Kong, Kam Sha Zhu. Gua Si Ong Mang Kong, Nen Uwa Tang, Kiao, Elena Zi, Megan Michael, Kwa In Chua Ho Ho Jiao Ko, Winston Hia, Lan Ki Jiao Ko, Lan Gai Ki Chu Lai, Huan Diu Ban Cheng Bi, E Ka Ting Sheng Guan. Nen Uwa Si Ke Shok Lai, Tui In Dia Tai To. Ta Su Di Nya Ko Be Kwa Diu Gun Ke Ki Chong E Video, จูงว่าเจ้าโก้ความเดียวอุบันเชียงปีเอกาติงเชียงกวนชาลิงกี้ขวานการสุดที่ตุ้ยสิเกเวดีโอดีโนอุติโอมิงกี้ชาลิงก